ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಶ್ರುತಿಸ್ಮೃತಿಪುರಾಣಾಲಯ ಕರುಣಾಲಯ ನಮಿ ಭಗವತ್ಪಾದಶಂಕರ ಲೋಕಶಂಕರ ನಾರಾಯಣ ನಮಸ್ಕೃತ ನರಂಚೋತ್ತಮ ದೇವೀ ಸರಸ್ವತೀ ವ್ಯಾಸ ಮುದೀರೇತ್ ಯಕ್ಷ ಉಚ ಕೇನಸ್ವಿದ್ವಿತೀಯವಾಧಿಷ್ಠಿರ ಉಚ ಧೃತ್ಯಾತೀಯವಾತಿ ಧೃತಿ ದಿ ವರ್ಡ್ ಧೃತಿ ಧಾತು ಇಸ್ ಧೃ ಟಿ ಇಸ್ ಸಫಿಕ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಎಟ್ ತ್ರೀ ಲೆವೆಲ್ಸ್ the body the vital force called prana and then the mind you need dhruti at all three levels so here i have a teka so dhrutya yaya dharayate manah pranendriya kriya ha yoge navya bhicharinya dhrutissa partha satviki this is from gita so you have to have yoga in your life what is yoga asanas at the level of the body pranayama at the level of the prana vital force and then dhyanam dharana dhyanam and the samadhi these are not from yoga darshana they are from vedanta the vedantic samadhanam which is somewhat different from yoga darshanam because uh, yoga darshanam is based on the principle of dualism yoga people are dualists dvaita people they are they are not advaita people there are shankara and upanishads are advaita therefore uh, the goal of uh, meditation the method and the goal of meditation in yoga uh, that uh, patanjali yoga and vedanta is all together different the goal is different the method is also different so you should not confuse between the two when it comes to body and body and prana both are same same means we adopt the patanjali yoga vedanta doesn't have a separate discipline for keeping the stamina of the body in good shape so what is dhruti now dhruti is stamina at the level of the body stamina so means you are able to keep yourself up till the last minute or last breath of life that is the stamina so we we need it we we should uh, we should aim at it that is not a desire that don't confuse it with the desire that is not a desire like i want to remain independent and uh, active as much as possible till the last breath so much so when it is time to go i sit upright close the eyes inhale deeply say om and go that must be the goal ಓಮಿತ್ಯಕಾಕ್ಷರ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವ್ಯಾಹರನ್ ಮಾಮನುಸ್ಮರ ಯಫ್ ಪ್ರಯಾತಿ ತ್ಯಜನ್ ದೇಹಂ ಸ ಯಾತಿ ಪರಮಾಂಗತಿ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಮಿನಾ ದ ಧೃತಿ ಎಟ್ ದಿ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಫಿಸಿಕಲ್ ಬಾಡಿ ವಿಲ್ ಇಟ್ ಕಮ್ ಡೌನ್ ನೋ ಓಕೆ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಡಿಸ್ಟರ್ಬಿಂಗ್ ಯಾ okay for the om om it is better now you can read to say little more if you can no you can read to say little more leave it like that okay so you need that physical stamina what is the stamina means you can stand on your feet you can do your you can use your hands and uh, you can speak till the last breath of life that is the stamina physical stamina it is called dhritihi 
and you should aim at it. You should, you should not aim at uh, that when I become bedridden, there are people to serve me. You should not start like that. <laughs> okay? So this is called self-reliance. So, therefore, that, that dhriti. So you should uh, aim at uh, dhriti as your companion, support, system in the life. Dhriti will support me. Dhriti will keep me going in my life till the last breath. That should be the aim. You aim it, you get it. That, that is how it is. Uh, you don't aim it that way, then you won't get it also. Now we have to reduce it a bit. Yeah, you have to reduce it, yeah. Om, Om. Yeah, now it is good. Now it is good. So, this dhriti called stamina at the level of the body is the outcome of a good activity at the level of the body, continuous activity, daily activity. Means you remain, you keep yourself active physically. And uh, so, not only that, in the mind also, you are active and your mind is pure. So, you heal the mind in order to keep the body healthy. That should be the goal. Okay? Generally, what we do is, uh, we give a lot of importance uh, to physical health and ignore the mental purity. Mental health means mental purity. What is mental health? Mind is pure. How do you know mind is pure? How do you know? Mind is pure when mind is not agitated. So this is what is called prasada. You look at your mind. Is it cheerful and quiet? Or to put it the other way, quiet and cheerful? If so, that state of mind is called prasada. Unfortunately, what we have done, we have converted prasada into a laddu or a sweet item which is distributed in the temple. Nobody knows about the meaning of the prasada as the mental state of quiet and cheer. Nobody knows it. Everybody assumes that prasada is the laddu that you purchase in the temple. It is sold also. Look at that. Generally, if a small prasada, this much prasada, uh, if it is given, you need not sell. You take it and put it in the mouth and that is the end of it. But whereas you want this big and sometimes this big also, then they have to sell and you have to purchase. That cannot be given free. So the corruption goes in the... like that it goes. Anyway, the point is, when the mind is having the quality of prasada, the body remains healthy and you will be able to have that physical stamina. But at the same time, you should aim at physical stamina also. How do you get it? Two kinds of physical exercises you have to do. One is the aerobic exercise, like walking, jogging if you can, cycling, etc. And then uh, stamina exercise, which is yoga, yoga asana. Yoga asana is not a substitute for aerobic exercise. You should know that. Just because you do yoga, you need not do aerobic exercise is wrong. That's why people uh, who pursue yoga, they don't do any aerobic exercise like walking, cycling, etc. They don't do. They'll be doing yoga, yoga only. By 60s, they will have a belly. <laughs> you look at the yoga people, they will have a belly. And now they cannot do yoga as well as they were doing earlier. Therefore, they will describe the asana and one brahmachari will be doing by the side. <laughs> you got the point? <laughs> he only describes. Now, this, in this asana, you bend. Without bending the knees, you bend the back and touch the feet. This Swami doesn't do that. A brahmachari will be doing it by the side, devastation. So, but that is not the point. So, you should do aerobic exercises, and also yoga asana you should do. Generally, we don't need aerobic exercises if you have a lifestyle which is very active. Like 
just uh, look at one generation before. They did not need aerobic exercises and all that because they were walking, walking, walking. Everything is done by walking only. For everything you walk. Always walking. Never uh, calculating how many steps they were taking, etc. Very routinely, naturally walking um, uh, meters, then kilometers, etc. They were walking. Every single job, job is done by walking. In the house also, ladies were doing all kinds of physical uh, chores, like, uh, uh, like, like uh, grinding, and then cooking, uh, washing the clothes, physically. You have to wash the clothes physically. Then cleaning the floor with a broomstick. Everything they were doing. Everything is a physical activity they were doing. But now, machines have come. Now, uh, washing machine has come. Washing powder and washing machine, those two came together. The day Nirma, Nirma washing powder <laughs> and washing machine came into Indian society, that day the washerman community has vanished from the society. There are no washerman, Chakali, that washerman community has disappeared. It is, just doesn't exist. In our childhood it used to be there, but not anymore. What could be the reason for it? Nirma powder and a washing machine. So the lady of the house need not do any washing. Then, uh, so any cook, cooking also, they were sitting and doing with wood, wood and all that. But now they stand and do with electrical stove and all that. So you don't even need to sit. So when you stop sitting, you lose the habit of sitting. Now you cannot sit. You and I, we cannot sit. We cannot bend, we cannot sit, we can only stand upright like that. We lose uh, so the capacity to sit, we lose it. Nobody can sit, very rarely people can say, you are blessed. <laughs> <laughs> really. So, we lose that capacity. And uh, so the ladies also became very, uh, very sedentary in their lifestyle. And whatever little work is left, that you employ a, a servant maid. Now the lady will be sitting in the sofa and watching the TV. At one time, to change the channel, you have to get up and go near and turn the knob. Now the remote has come. You need not get up from the seat, even to change the channel. So this has become like that. That's why... So the problem is, uh, why people find it difficult to sleep in the night? Because they don't work hard during the day. If you work hard eight hours a day, you will never ever have any sleeping problem. The problem of sleep is there in our lives only because we have become sedentary in our lifestyle. So this we should reverse. This we should reverse. So, pay attention to it, actively you reverse it. So, for that you prepare your mind. How to prepare your mind? At the level of the body. So, I need stamina. At the level of prana, I need vigor. And at the level of the mind, I need prasada. All the three. What is prasada? Even in the face of odds, odd situations or adversities in life, we remain calm and quiet and we are not agitated for any kind of situation that may develop in the, in the family, in the world or in the body itself. Any kind of situation may develop, we are not agitated, we, do, we remain calm and quiet and even cheerful. That is the prasada of the mind. And so, you have to rely upon these three things. Physical stamina, pranic vigor, and mental prasada, cheer and quiet. That must be my support system in life. I rely upon, for my comfort, I rely upon these three. They are my support system. They are the dvitiya. 
सो दट इट इज कॉल्ड धृति धृतिया द्वितीयवान भवति देन देर इज अनदर थिंग यू सी देर वॉज ए जेंटल मैन एलरली पर्सन हि वेक्स अप एट टू ओ क्लाक मिड नाइट आफ्टर अप टू टू ओ क्लाक हि स्लीप हि गो टू स्लीप ए बिट एर्ली एंड स्लीप ऑल राइट अप टू टू ओ क्लाक देन हि वेक्स अप एंड नाउ हि वॉन्ट्स टू फॉल बैक ए स्लीप बट हि डजन गेट गो बैक इन टू स्लीप हि रिमेन्स ए वेक एंड यू नो वॉट हि डज हि वेक्स अप हिज वाइफ एंड स्टार्ट सम डिस्कशन डिस्कशन इज वॉट दिस गॉसिप इज देर यू नो generally the ladies said sometimes the gents also engage in gossip during the day time and this gentleman all his gossip is between 2:30 and 4:30 with his wife all gossip is with his wife and they, he sleeps by 4:30 but 4:30 is the time when the lady has to get up and clean play, home and all that so the daily chores are waiting for her and that is the time when she has to get up so by the time this man he goes back to sleep a second time it is time for her to get up every day as she was suffering like that then i advised the elderly person you wake up don't wake up your wife then he said how can i do that because uh, i am unable to sleep you chant some bhagwan's name silently you sit and do some japam or some pranayama you do don't wake her up okay you got the point <laughs> so dvitiya means wife so you don't try to depend upon psychologically one should not depend upon the other person the woman or man whatever sometimes we try to depend upon the son or daughter psychologically sometimes we employ a person day nurse and night nurse and we depend upon psychologically as well as physically on them you should not do that you should become independent and self reliant so what is the secret of moksha that was the question put to uh, swami ramatertha and the, he answered self reliance is the secret of moksha that is what he said uh, and uh, he gives the example of uh, elephants versus lion in the forest elephants always live as a herd is a family uh, they live as family elephant is a, a family life form it is a family animal it cannot live in uh, alone it has to be a part of the family and not even family herd two three families come together and form a herd and they live as a herd they move in the forest as a herd and uh, when it is time to sleep one or two elephants elephants remain standing awake as the sentries and the rest of the elephants six or eight of them they go to sleep small elephants middle aged elephant big elephants all, all uh, ages are there in the herd they all go to sleep at a at a proper place two elephants one this side one that side stand the sentry the sentry duties why so because the elephant is uh, very much afraid it is a frightened animal it is in the entire forest elephant is the most powerful animal the most uh, the strongest animal is the elephant no, no elephant no other animal comes close to elephant in physical strength most frightened animal is also elephant so don't be like elephant be like lion you must have seen some of the safaris it so uh, i was lucky enough to see the safari the elephants are always in the as a herd and the lion i happened to see the lion it was walking alone lion is always alone swayameva murugendrata it is the king of the forest by itself it doesn't have any um, any entourage or uh, some people around no uh, some other animals around no it is by itself and uh, in the in the cave which it, it uh, lives it lives in a cave suppose it is the only animal living in the cave and it comes out of the cave uh, early in the morning when it is time to come out it comes out alone 
it moves along and it lives alone and it is entirely independent. It doesn't know what is fear. That is the lion. So two extremes, lion versus elephant in the forest. We should be like elephant. No, we should be like lion, not like elephant. Then I will conclude the discussion. Bhavati. Suppose it so happens that uh, one becomes sick and uh, so he is alone and he is sick. Or there are other members of the family in the home but everybody is sleeping. The person is alone and he is sick and he wakes up in the middle of the night. Generally these illnesses they become more pronounced during the night. If the night, if you can manage, and the day comes, even the illness also becomes less pronounced. You will be able to relax a bit. But during the night time, the illness, it acquires a, a kind of vigor. It looks like that. And it becomes more painful. The physical pain is less during the day, but it is more pronounced during the night. And a fever, suppose the person is having fever, during the day he is all right, but during the night the fever becomes more pronounced and more painful, this and that. So, night time, that's why they call it Kala Ratri. Kala means it is time, one meaning. Time is frightening. People are afraid of time. You know, time is death also. That's why the night is uh, characterized as Kala, frightening. So, when such a thing happens to any anyone, so, suddenly one wakes up in the middle of the night and he finds himself helpless. And uh, either there is nobody to give support or to help, etc. Or there are people around and we don't want to disturb them. But one feels helpless. Then what one should do? Instead of disturbing others and the hope that the others will be able to uh, do some help instead of that, you just uh, look within. The dvitiya, the support, the, the help uh, comes from within. You look within. And uh, you take refuge in the heart. If a chanting of the sacred name of the Lord, like Rama, helps do that. Chant the sacred name Rama and abide in the heart and uh, derive uh, peace, strength, stamina, fearlessness, relaxation, and cheerfulness from within the heart. Don't disturb anybody. Use the sacred name of Rama or uh, use the sacred sound Om. So what people do when they are sick, uh, they, you, they, they, uh, they, they, what is called moaning, you know, they moan. How do they moan? Hmm. Uh, 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 like that they moan, right? They should not moan like that. Well, how they should moan? Om, Om, Rama, Rama, Om. Like that one should moan. And even while mourning, you should focus in the heart. Say Om, 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 Rama, Rama, Om. Like that you do. You got the point? You can do it. Very easy. Not difficult at all. And uh, you do that. You look for succor, help or support from within. You will get it. You, it never fails you. The people around will fail. You know what they will say, just now I gave you a cup of water, come on, go ahead and sleep. That is what the other person says and goes to sleep. And this person, he cannot sleep. He is helpless. Therefore, when we become helpless, instead of, you, you can take help, what I am saying, you take it in the proper spirit. Physically, you can take help from somebody else. But, it is not about somebody helping you. It is about gaining that uh, strength and uh, uh, the sense of uh, sense of uh, succor 
that you want, the other person cannot give you. The other person can physically lift you and put you on a seat or physically help you to lie down on the bed, that much only the other person can do. More than that, the other person cannot do anything. He puts you on the bed and puts the cover and now he advises, come on, go ahead and sleep. It only means that if you go to sleep, I will go to sleep. That is the idea of that. So you can get only that much help from the other person. And you should not expect anything more than that. That is great. You bless the person. You derive all the strength from within. You can. You can. You believe me, you can. So that dhriti, that inner courage, which I have described at the three levels, that will be your support system in life. That is the advice given. So be self-reliant in the matters of physical and psychological wellness. Be self-reliant. There are people, this personality development people, or this kind of psychology people advise you how you share your sorrow with somebody else. That will reduce the burden. Don't follow that advice. You think like this, why should I share my sorrow with the other person? I won't. I will keep my sorrow with myself. That is called a Shiva. Shiva consumes poison and he holds the poison in himself. Sorrow is the poison. Disease, illness, pain, sorrow, they are the poison, physical as well as psychological. You keep that poison in yourself. You gulp it and keep it in yourself. Don't try to share with others. And you share happiness, cheerfulness, and some good things like uh, some extra money, etc. Such good things you share with people, not sorrow. Sorrow, you gulp it down. You tell, Om Namah Shivaya, Shiva, I am Shiva, I am He, Shivoham. You tell yourself that way, and you, can show that you keep that poison in yourself, and you digest that poison. Don't try to share with others. So, people give such advice. These are all very elementary advices, which may be all right for the worldly people, but they are not all right for Vedanta people. Now, if you get angry, take a towel and beat it on the floor. No, this kind of advice. So, now that advice validates your anger. Yeah, that means I can be angry, only I have to beat the wet towel on the, on the floor. That is all I have to do. Go to the bathroom, and uh, make the towel wet and beat it on the bathroom floor. That is all I have to do. I, anger is otherwise okay. As long as I do this wet, wet towel formula, it is okay. It is not okay. Therefore, go into, don't go into this kind of elementary. You share your sorrow with the other person so that your sorrow burden becomes half. That means you are not self-reliant. So, therefore, that is the advice. Then next question. Rajan kena cha buddhiman. O Maharaja, that is O Dharma Raja, a person is considered wise, buddhiman, by what? What makes a person wise? So, then the answer by Dharma Raja. Buddhiman Vruddha Sevaya. This is an advice given all the time. So, Nityam Vruddhopa Sevinaha. That is the advice given to the young people, young and middle aged. So, you try to be of help to the elderly people. Suppose an elderly person is unable to walk around for some reason, he has to walk, but he is unable to walk. You go and help him to walk. Or he has uh, some pain in the feet, then you go and press the feet, do some massage and help him, or apply some medicine and help him. So, you serve the elderly people. You start at home. At home, your father, you do some service to the father. Generally, young people don't do it. That is the misfortune. Because there is a thing called a generation gap. What is the generation gap? The young man looks into the future, whereas the old man looks into the past. 
Now where they meet, they don't meet. East is east and west and west, the twain shall never meet. Because the past looking person and the future looking guy, they don't have anything in common. There is a gulf between the two. That is the generation gap. So you should overcome that generation gap, the young man. Learn to look at, uh, uh, learn to understand the point of view of the old man. Don't apply logic to the old person, apply love. The advice is, you apply all the logic in the world to yourself. None of it to the elder person. You only show love to the elder person. So when it comes to parents, show love. When it comes to yourself, be logical. But what we do, we love ourselves and apply logic to the elders. <laughs> reverse. Eh? Therefore, it should not be done like that. Logic should be reserved to oneself. And love for all others, particularly elders, they should be served. Some work they offer, they give, you do this work for me, you should do it. Oh, you are very frustrating, you, you follow old methods, uh, we need not do this way, that way. All this logic you should not apply. You should help the old man. The old man tells, get me one razor blade, suppose he says. You should not say, this razor blade thing is over, now it is not there, where new methods have come, uh, you should follow that. You should not say that, go and get a razor blade and give to him. The old man wants a radio. Now there are no radios, only digital and uh, uh, chat, GPT. Don't say like that. Get a radio and give to him. Okay? So, you, you should, don't apply logic. You apply love and serve. Nityam vruddhopa sevinaha. Every day in your life, there must be uh, the service to the elderly. And if you get that opportunity, never lose it. Generally, you don't get that opportunity. Generally, the elderly people nowadays, they are going to the old age homes. They are not living with the children. The families have become nuclear families. And therefore, children don't get an opportunity to serve the old people. Old people don't come anywhere near the children. But suppose the old man comes near the son, or son goes near the old man, they should do some service. And uh, they should do some service. They should make it a point to do some service. Suppose uh, some drinking water has to be brought from a distant place in the village. There is a well where you have to fetch the drinking water in a pitcher. So you go and do it to the mother. And the mother or father wants that the drinking water should be brought only after taking bath. It must be not only pure but also pious. Only after bath you should bring it. No, 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 all that I don't follow. You should not say like that. You take bath with the wet clothes, go to the well and fetch the water and give to them. So fo follow what all they want, what all they wish you to do, please do that. And uh, that will help you in a very big way. That is the wisdom in life. Okay? I have said enough about it. We shall move forward. Yaksha uvacha kim brahmananam devatvam so now, Yaksha is using the expressions Brahmana, Kshatriya, we, we see them, before us they are there. You, uh, soon, not soon, later, uh, Yaksha will ask a question. O Dharmaraja, how do you decide the Varna? Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra, how do you decide? And he gives two options. One, Guna and Karma, to Janma, two options he gives. And Dharmaraja answers. You know what is the answer of Dharmaraja? Guna and Karma. And he particularly says, not Janma. Whereas in Gita, not Janma is not said. There are only Guna Karma Vibhagasha. Only that much is said. Not Janma is not said. 
It implied, it is implied but not said in so many words, but here it is said clearly. Therefore, the word Brahmana and Kshatriya, in view of the things that are coming later in the same section, have to be understood as Varna, not Kola. This discussion I will do there. Now I don't want to enter into it. Only take it. So based on the quality, guna, another profession. Guna, karma. Karma is profession. Guna is the disposition. The disposition under the profession. Define the varna called brahmana. In English you can say the intellectual. Kshatriya is the warrior. You can translate like that. So here is a brahmana, an intellectual. Means he is educated and he is well trained in the study of the shastras, etc. Now this brahmana, he is, he is called deva, devatvam. So what is deva? Divu kantav means shining. What is the shining here? This Brahmana is shining with knowledge, with understanding, with wisdom. That is the shining. So, that is Devatvam. So, for a Brahmana, for an intellectual, what is this shining in the intellectual? That is the question. Kim Brahmana Nam Devatvam. So, when you are looking at an intellectual, you consider him as, a, as an effulgent one or as a brilliant one. Brilliance is also shining. Effulgence is also shining. You consider the intellectual brilliant or effulgent when or how. What is that brilliance? What is that effulgence in an intellectual? That is the question. First you should understand the question properly. Then Yudhishthira Uvacha Swadhyaya Esam Devatvam so that is the answer. So for the intellectual people, means people given to studies, for them Swadhyayaha defines their brilliance. What is Swadhyaya? Swadhyaya. So, you see somehow uh, this word Swadhyaya, this practice of Swadhyaya, it has uh, vanished from certain groups. Upanishads talk of Swadhyaya. Swadhyaya pravachana bhyam na pramaditavyam. That is the Upanishad says. So you do Swadhyaya. Means you study by yourself, in yourself. Swasmin, Svena, like that you can use that as Tatpurusha Samasa. In oneself, Swasmin. By oneself, Svena, means independent of the teacher, independent of the speaker or guru. So you have to learn this, you have to practice this Swadhyaya in your life. Otherwise what happens, you know, so they, they say Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, like that they say. And so everything applied to, handed over to Guru. So when you hear this Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, that verse you must have heard hundreds of times, that verse doesn't inspire me at all. In fact, that verse makes me a bit feel down. Why? Because in the Upanishads, there is only Brahma. There is no Brahma Deva, Vishnu and Shiva. The Trinity, this Trinity is not there in the Upanishads. Three gods are one god. No trinity. Trinity is in Christianity, in a theological context, not in the Christian mysticism. In the theological context, you have God, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost is a Jeevaha, I suppose. So, that is the trinity. In Christian theology, there is a trinity. It's okay. That follows its own course. That is fine. But there is no trinity in Upanishads. In Ramayana, etc., there is no trinity. In Veda, there is no trinity. The trinity has come in the Purana. If you apply some historic perspective to it, there was no trinity at the time of Shankara, 
and uh, so up to 700, up to 500 or 600 Christian era, A.C.E. or modern era or Christian era. Up to then there was no trinity. That means uh, this verse, Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, is composed by somebody. Somebody has put up that verse uh, as recently as a thousand years back. It may not be even thousand years old. It could be some 400, 300 years back also it could be. And uh, it takes, it takes as if the Trinity is the fact. But that is, you don't see Trinity in the Upanishads. So why do you say Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu? Everybody says so, you say that. So, so, so you should not hand over the self-realization to the Guru. Guru, you, will you hand over your lunch and breakfast to the Guru? <laughs> that you don't do. Today onwards, my breakfast, my Guru will do breakfast on my behalf. My lunch, Guru will do on my behalf. Sleep also, Guru will sleep on my behalf. I keep awake. You don't do that. Only self-realization you hand over to Him. <laughs> it is not Guru's responsibility. Your self-realization is not Guru's job. It is your job. And you have to learn, you have to study yourself. You go to the Guru, by all means you go to the Guru. Take help from the Guru. That is Shravanam. What is Shravanam? The Guru, the scripture and yourself. Three elements are there in Shravanam. But when it comes to Manana, the Guru is dropped. Yourself and the scripture alone are there. And when you come to Nididhyasanam, the scripture is also dropped. You yourself are there. Therefore, in Swadhyaya, there are two levels. One is, you study the scripture, that is Swadhyaya. Second is, you practice Samadhana, meditation. Pay attention to yourself. Uh, watch the mind. Watch the body. When you watch the body, you will understand the body. People don't have a proper understanding of the body. So, you will understand the body. When you watch the pain, you will understand the pain. Thereby, you see, this is the law. You watch something, pay attention to something. Then what happens? You understand that something. Whatever you pay attention to, you understand it. And then what happens? You get a leverage or command over that something, that is the sequence. So you pay attention to the body, then you will understand the body, that gives you a modicum of command over the body. If not a full command like young people, some command you will have on the body. So by understanding the body, and you understand the body by watching the body, that becomes meditation. That is Nididhyasana. Then you watch the breath. Don't assume that you know the breath. You don't know the breath. There are many secrets hidden in the breath. Many prana. Many secrets are there. So you watch the breath. Pay attention to the breath. Then slowly you will understand what is breath. All its secrets, the breath starts revealing to you. And then you will get a command over the breath. Then come to mind. You watch the mind, pay attention to the movement of mind, what is going on, what is it doing, what kind of thoughts it is producing. The entire thought process, be aware of the thought process, moment to moment. Then you will understand your mind. Oh, this is the mind, this is how it functions, this is how it reacts. This is how it uh, produces uh, thoughts. This is how it comes out with a desire. This is how it comes out with worry, agitation, etc. This is how it comes out with uh, some belief, this, that. The entire structure of the mind you will understand. How? By watching the movement of mind, moment to moment. That becomes meditation. Then when you understand the mind, you get a command over the mind. So all this work you have to do by yourself. That is called Swadhyaya. 
So you have to study scriptures yourself. And then you have to understand. So Swadhyaya means you have to study yourself and understand. You see, I I will put it this way. The way you think and feel, you look at that. There is a thing called thinking and feeling. In a given matter, what is the way you think and feel? Just you, you understand that. Suppose uh, there are elders in, at home, father or mother, elders are there. What is the way you feel and think about them? How do you think and feel about them? So they are there, let them be there and I, I, I am busy with my work. Is that the way you think and feel about them? Or, Are, bhai, this is a nuisance, I have to live with it. Is that the way you think and feel about them? Or, this is an opportunity to serve them. They will be around for a short while. They will not live as long as they lived already. They will be around for a short while. Give or take a few months, they will be around for a short time and I should utilize this opportunity and I should do some service to them. So that is another way of thinking and feeling. Where is your feeling and thinking? Three options I gave you. Where is your thinking and feeling? Suppose your thinking and feeling is, okay, let them live their life and let them be, and uh, they take their food and they fend for themselves, and I am busy with my work. Is that the way you think and feel? If that is the way you think and feel about the elders at home, you have to change it. How to change? First you should know the way you feel and think, you should understand. Then the change will happen. So you watch how you are looking, you watch at your mind and you understand the way you feel and think. Okay, this is how I think and feel. I should change it. It will change automatically. I gave a small example about God. What is the way you feel and think about God? You have to examine that. So, this Desha Buddhi is there about God. Desha Buddhi. Desha Buddhi means God is in Kashi, in the temple. That is the Desha Buddhi. The one who restricts God to a place, to a location, he doesn't know God. Because up Kashi also there is God, down Kashi also there is God, left Kashi there is God, right Kashi there is God. He doesn't know that. He tries to locate God in Kashi. It is like uh, they say, somebody, one uh, scholar told me, Kashi, Ganga in Kashi is very sacred. That is what he told me. He has taken bath in Ganga already, but he did not take bath in Ganga in Kashi. (laughs) Ganga in Kashi is very sacred. I asked him, there is Ganga in Kashi, it is very sacred, nice, but what is above Ganga in Kashi? What is above? That river, above is also there. So above Kashi, uh, what is that river? Is it Ganga or not? It is Ganga. And below Kashi, it is Ganga or not? It is Ganga. Then why do you say Ganga in Kashi is sacred? So when you say it is Ganga in Kashi is sacred, above that is not Ganga and below that is not Ganga, somehow it is something different, means he doesn't know what is Ganga. Therefore this Desha Buddhi, Now, how do you feel about God? Do you feel of God in terms of, think and feel of God in terms of Desha Buddhi, space location? If that is the way your thought process about God is there, you examine it. You be aware of it first. First to become aware of it. And then once you are aware of it, then you study. God is everywhere, Sarvam Khalvidam Brahma. That is what the Upanishad says. But this is the way I was, I am accustomed to thinking. Whereas the Shruti says this, I have to follow this Shruti, I have to examine the way I am thinking. 
Therefore, you, you come to this much only, this much only. Then you know what happens? The desha buddhi about God will be replaced by sarvam kalvidam brahma buddhi. This is called swadhyaya. Would you understand it? Therefore, in swadhyaya, you have to look closely. That is called samadhana. You have to look closely the way of thinking and feeling in yourself. You have to look closely. Said this much, let me add this and this. When you look closely, you understand the way you feel and think. That is enough. That is enough. Understanding is enough. After understanding what? There is no what. You have understood this is the way feeling and thinking is there in the mind. Now what happens? Don't judge it, don't condemn it. Just be watchful. It will undergo a transformation. Now the desha buddhi will be replaced by sarvatma buddhi. So this attention, you pay attention, that liberates you. And you do not pay attention, that is called inadvertence, that keeps you in bondage. Therefore your God is either in Vaikuntha or Kailasa or in Kashi or Badari. Now, as a student of Vedanta, are you comfortable with that feeling and thinking that God is in Vaikuntha Kailasa or Kashi or Badari? Are you okay with that feeling and thinking? It is, a, it is a contradictory, it is. So you become aware of the contradictions in you. That is called Swadhyaya. I am now study, I am examining the word Swadhyaya. You see, you look at your uh, thought process. Try to understand the ways of feeling and thinking in your mind. Begin to question. Start to question. There is Swadhyaya. You have to uplift yourself. You see, I suggest the most obvious things are the most doubtful. So proceed on that premise. For example, Ask yourself questions such as, was I really born? You have to ask that question. You cannot live in this contradiction. So I was born on such and such date. You carry your uh, kundali in your pocket all the time. You are very sure that you were born at such and such a date, time and place to a set of parents. You are very sure about it. Come to Gita class. Start Ajonichya Shrutoyam Puranaha. And uh, like, uh, so, Ganga Tire Ganga Dasaha, Yamuna Tire Yamuna Dasaha. When you're studying Gita, you were never born, you are not going to die. Nahanyate Hanyamane Shari Re. But uh, once Gita class is over, you, I was born to a set of parents at that place, at that time, this is my Janma Kundali. Ye kya baat hai bhai? This kind of uh, uh, Jekyll and uh, Jekyll and Hyde, uh, Hyde H-Y-D-E. So you cannot play this kind of a game, I tell you. Now what happens if you play this kind of a game? So you are caught in contradictions. There is a, one Mahatma used to tell, contradiction is uh, the worst obstacle for yoga. That is the contradiction. Worst obstacle for yoga. This happens in our lives. Somebody wants to lose weight. Why somebody, ever one of us want to lose a pound or two, right? <laughs> so, when we want to lose weight, eh, so you cannot contradict yourself. So you, uh, you want to lose weight, but at the same time you are eating donuts uh, all the time, visiting Dunkin' Donuts and eating donuts. So you cannot live with this kind of contradiction. So, so you have to ask this question, was I really born? You have to ask that question. 
the most obvious thing is the most doubtful if you come to vedanta if you don't come to vedanta nobody will doubt this is the most obvious thing i was born on such and such a date at such and such a place to a set of parents it is the most obvious thing but the moment you come to vedanta that becomes the most doubtful thing was i really born how do you know how do you know that you were born somebody has told you so why do you live with second hand information when it comes to your innermost self second hand information is okay for the outward things but for example this watch where from it came it came from a new york okay that is all right second hand but you cannot live with second hand information another name for it is hearsay not hearsay hearsay so hearsay you live with hearsay about yourself you cannot do that was i really born suppose if i was really born before birth that means before birth i was not there then only you can call it birth but was i there before birth or not I, i it seems that i was there before birth also if i was there before birth then how come i was born in the first place that is one question then second question am i really so and so ever father should ask this question am i really the father of this young man i mean the point is he is an independent human being and so assuming a status for oneself that i am the father he is the son and so living with that title with that conviction about oneself is wrong you are not father body is the father not you body is the father of the body in atma there is no father no son na pita na putra so then then okay that is one way of one way of uh, swadhyaya i will give you another swadhyaya please try this i exist right is there any doubt about it no doubt i exist how do any doubt okay how do i know that i exist swadhyaya how do you know that, how do i know that i exist i look open the eyes and look at my so ah, now i know that i exist is it like that is it like that no you are prior to the thought before thought happens you are already there you exist before thought happens you exist before perception you exist before thought you are prior to perception and prior to thought but still you exist not only that you know that you exist how do i know that i exist perception is out inference is out now you have to say the scripture tells me that i exist therefore i exist is it like that then how do you know that uh, how do i know that uh, you ask this question to yourself how do i know that i exist you dwell upon this question this is the swadhyaya you know that you exist because of that inner light which is no different from your own existence you dwell upon this question that becomes a swadhyaya and you will get liberated then uh, one more question so parents they are my parents so have they created me or had i created them they are parents before my birth or after my birth then i have created them right you say a father was distributing sweets his first son was born he was distributing sweets so take a sweet and ask what is the occasion son i became father that is what he said he became father that's why he distributing sweets then i asked him i took my sweet and asked him who made you father he became father right you became father good you are distributing sweets that is wonderful i take my sweet but i have a question who made you the father the boy the son made you 
made me the father. Then you are not the father, he is the father. <laughs> Child is the father of the son. So, you created the father or father created you? You have to understand. Hmm? Therefore, this pita, putraha, etc., they are conventions, they are social conventions and family conventions. They are not valid in the context of Atma Jnana. That's why uh, you study Vedanta and still hold on to father this and that. It is not proper. You pay reverence and you have to do some service to that. All elders you should do service. Why only father? But that is not the point. The point is uh, you, you are not a father. You are not the son. Na pita, na putraha. You have to understand that. Then so many things are in building a prison for yourself. This is how we build prison. Put so much energy in building the prison for oneself. Now spend as much energy on demolishing the prison. But one advantage is, demolishing is always easier than building. Therefore, when you examine the falls, it immediately dissolves. The falls remains only as long as you do not examine. So you examine, you investigate, inquire, search within, search within, and you will know, you will understand that you are the cause of the universe. They, they give the example of the, the gossamer spider. So it it uh, it, is, it uh, pull, uh, brings out a web out of itself and spreads it and then sits in it, right? And when it is time to fold up, it takes all that web into itself and moves out. You are doing just the same. That is the example given by the Upanishad, Mandukya Upanishad. That is what you do. You are sleeping, there is no world. Then you are, you wake up, you are like that gossamer spider, or the, that small creature. So, and then you start building a web around you. My home, my body, my home, my mind, my pressures, my pains, my concerns, my worries, my relations, and so my stars, my planets, my gods, they are also included in the web. You create your own gods. And then you, you live in that, you sit in that web for some time, and then take back all that web into you. So who created this universe? You created this universe. Therefore, you, have to, you, you understand that you create the universe by inquiry and investigation. You understand that? You have to do swadhyaya, you have to do. So the implications are mind-boggling. Suppose if I am creating the world in which I live, then why am I creating an unhappy world? That is the question. My, uh, my, uh, so I ask, I ask the same question to you. Why do you create an unhappy world? From today onwards, don't create an unhappy world. Create a cheerful and happy world. You can. Because when you create, when you make the curry, why do you make it so salty and so spicy? Make it nice and nice. <laughs> so do it properly. So similarly, why do you create an unhappy world? You make a, you take a resolve, you look within and take a resolve. From today onwards, I will not create the world in which there are enemies. You say that. And create the world in which there are no enemies. You can do that. I, I don't have any enemies, you can say that. Nameshatruhu. All are Atma. All are friends, no enemies. You can do that. So, you need not create an ugly world, you can create a beautiful world. But first, you should know 
that you are the cause of the universe. How do you know that you are the cause of the universe? By Swadhyaya. You understand yourself, watch yourself, study yourself, and by Swadhyaya. There is another Swadhyaya example. You watch your breath. So examine your breath, watch. They call it Vipassana meditation. Bhagavan Buddha introduced it. He discovered that meditation. You watch your breath. And then gradually, the breath will start revealing its secrets to you. The pulmonologists don't know those secrets. Even they have to observe the breath and know the secrets. When you, for example, just to give an example, when you watch your breath, you will understand that birth and death, life and death are together. Like as you inhale, it is life. As you exhale, it is death. Both are in the same moment. Both are in the same breath. What is death? The person exhales. That is death. He exhales. So in the exhalation, there is death. In in suppose he is inhaling. They check, hey, is he alive or dead? They put a hand here. He is alive. Means he is exhaling and then again he is inhaling. The inhalation is life. Exhalation is death. But then why do you, why don't you understand that life and death are together? Why do you separate them? Life today, death tomorrow. Or after hundred tomorrows. Or thousand tomorrows. You want to push death to tomorrow, hundred tomorrows, thousand tomorrows. And you want to do pujas for that. Suppose you understand that life and death are together in this moment. Then you become free from all these rituals to push the death elsewhere. Because they are together. So the point is not the ritual. The point is our failure to understand the simple truth that life and death are together in this present moment. They are together in the present moment. So, Yamo Vaivasvato Raja. There is a verse like that. Yamo Vaivasvato Raja, Eshate Hrudi Saunsthitaha. <laughs> so, like that, there is a verse. The God of Death is sitting here. Here. Now and here, he is sitting here. Not tomorrow, not after hundred tomorrows. Now and here. That is the secret of, that is the secret you will discover by watching the breath. So this way, Swadhyaya makes you a Deva. Deva means brilliant, effulgent, with knowledge, with understanding. That is the effulgence. There is no other effulgence. That is the effulgence. You see, sometimes what they do, they put the uh, photograph of God or Guru and put electric bulbs around the head. And uh, <laughs> that is not the effulgence, you know. And then they believe some ring, ring or some discus is going round and round and throwing lights like that. With uh, some electric circuit, you can do that. But people believe something really, something like that happens. <laughs> That is not the effulgence. This is the effulgence. The effulgence of understanding and wisdom that is in you. So where are we now? Let let us see one or two questions. How the vasanas carry from one life to the next life? Very simple and not a difficult thing at all. Yesterday's vasanas carry on till to, to, into today or not? How do they carry on? They are held in the memory. When you go to sleep, in the memory, seed memory, let us say, all the vasanas are contained in the seed memory. And when you wake up, the seed memory becomes the tree, memory tree, it becomes, vruksha. And uh, all the vasanas are the branches of that vruksha. So they come out. From the seed memory, they come out. This is during sleep. You know what is death? Death is called Dirgha Nidra. So it is a longer sleep. And another difference is, when you sleep, you wake up at the same place, in the same body. 
when it come, when it is death you go to sleep and wake up elsewhere in a different body that is the only difference therefore the memory body continues it is called a memory body the memory body continues the, the example is what is happening every day that's why this is called nitya srishti nitya pralayam every day night it is pralaya every day morning when you wake up it is srishti i told you the example you are the author of daily srishti and daily pralaya and you are the author of next birth also if you do not understand your swarupa you take yourself to be born and dying then uh, whatever you take yourself to be that you become so you say you are going to die then you will die you say i am going to be reborn then you will be reborn so you see um therefore these vasanas continue like that so in this context i will conclude uh, by telling you a story so this i told a few times uh, one person was uh, traveling uh, in the forest by footpath and he carried food with him uh, lunch in a box and it was hot sun and so he ca- he traveled half of the distance sat by the side of a lake in the forest under the tree and uh, in the shade and he ate the food he carried and uh, drank that water and took some rest so while doing that after uh, drinking water and finished about to take some rest and then proceed in the journey to reach the village so while about to take rest he thought how nice would it be if i have a folding cart you know this is the indian thing the fold because wherever you go the folding cart is easy to arrange how nice it will be if i get a folding cart here i can lie down on that instead of lying on the hard surface then suddenly a folding cart appeared there oh my god this is something then he lay down how nice would it be if i have a pillow a pillow appeared and then he slept and he woke up how nice would it be if i get a cup of coffee and two biscuits so they appeared he consumed the coffee with the biscuits and tea or biscuits and he was very happy then he got it out my god it is appearing like this is there a devil here or what that is the doubt he could have thought there must be a god here but no there must be a devil here then a devil appeared oh my god this devil will kill me or what it killed him <laughs> so the idea is uh, that the tree under which he sat and ate food that the tree is the kalpa vruksha yield wish uh, desire or wish yielding tree that is the kalpa vruksha whatever kalpana you make that will be fulfilled that is the tree kalpa vruksha in the story okay so that is the tree so you are living under the tree and the tree the kalpa vruksha is atma you are living under the tree and so if you say i am creating a happy world you will end up creating a happy world i create sorrow you end up creating sorrow i there are enemies there are enemies you create enemies whatever you wish it beca- it comes true because you are under the kalpa vruksha called atma therefore you understand that and wish rightly let me be liberated you get liberated let me understand myself you understand yourself let me love all you love all that is let i am he you are he that is the kalpurksha under which you are living i rely upon myself you rely upon yourself so that, that is the power you have the power of atma is with you which is the wish yielding tree like and uh, you are not employ utilizing that power it has it is there is infinity in you you are not utilizing that power because you say i am the body then you become the body i was born then you are born oh i will die then you will die i am birthless then you are birthless there is no death for me there is no death for you 
You have to understand it. This is called Swadhyaya. Study oneself. That is the Swadhyaya. That makes you a Deva. Devatvam. And you are the Brahmana. This is the Swadhyaya. You are the Deva. You can sing. I am He. Like that. Shivoham. You can sing the song. Shivoham. Om Purnamada. Purnamidam.